Well, first of all, congratulations on the new album, Cough Nice, which is out in uh, just over a month's time. Thank you. Um, by the time this goes out, it'll be a lot less than that because I'd rather not have it be a big gap. I want to get as much hype for the album as possible because from what I've heard so far, it's going to be pretty fucking amazing. So, Fuck yeah, man. Hell yeah. yeah. I was stoked just on it for it. sure. Sorry? I said we're stoked on it for sure. Good. You've every right to be because it is so um, like aggressive. But the two singles you've put out so far, they're both very different, which makes yeah. it that much more of an interesting uh, weight for the album itself is that you know there's going to be variety. Hell yeah. Yeah. And this, uh, the first one, we led with a more traditional, absence sense and then the second one is a total fucking departure which we were like oh man we were even like should this make the record we're like yeah all right let's go i mean who doesn't like a bit of black metal so throw in a bit of that in there <laughs> yeah and not only is it's, it's funny to hear that you know like wondering whether or not it should be on the album considering it's the title track you know that's it's almost what yeah, you're needing. even funnier <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you know it well i mean the title it was originally when we first recorded it um it didn't it didn't have a name yet and then it was like oh man this is a bit different and then then that ended up being the title track so i mean of course it made the record at that point uh but you know in the early i guess i should have said in the infantile stages we're like i don't know man you know you don't want to alienate your fans and have them go like oh so they think they're a black metal band now all right you know or or they think they're what like i don't know we went in like a total like cinematic uh like uh atmospheric space which was a it was a lot of fun to mix that mixing that was great it was like shit i get to flex my hollywood uh hollywood muscles right now and like this feels like a movie you know it's really uh dreamy and atmospheric and you know very unjust two guitars on either side, bass up the middle, you know, like a typical death metal production. So it's cool. Yeah. And um, that obviously translates well into the video itself as well, because you have that really cool um, like out in the woods, black metal vibe, but it's not like without dissing the old um, guard. It's not like an it's immortal silliness or anything like that. It's, uh, yeah, it, it's uh, it's really just our Florida wilderness over here which was a lot of fun to tug that fucking coffin around. <laughs> funny, funny story about that. Okay, so that ending scene where, uh, boom, cue the band and everybody's in that uh, thing. That was a fort that was built by, uh, I live in uh, the same neighborhood as Glenn Benton from Dia's side. Okay. So his son is uh, 19 years old and had built that fort in the woods with him and his buddies just to like hang out over the past couple of years. So, I mean, he's been in there a lot, which is a fun little tidbit. And yeah. uh, so six or seven of us dressed in all black were heading into the woods across the street from my house. Right. And I live in a residential neighborhood and we have this like big park area. So it's in there. So we, we go in there with, with this fucking coffin we go film our whole bit with pushing the coffin and all that stuff and, uh, you know, doing whatever we were doing with it in there. And on the way out, the, the cops are there. There's three or four cop cars. And they're like, I, some old lady was like, they're going into the woods with a coffin and they're in all black. Ah! <laughs> we came out and uh, cops were super cool. And they're like, all right, well, that that's new for us. We haven't seen this yet. So... <laughs> pretty funny <laughs> <laughs> just don't do it again all right that's yeah 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 don't don't do it again you need a permit <laughs> next time but uh you know it was very gorilla the whole thing was very gorilla so it was cool how the hell do you register for a coffin permit in a park or... <laughs> i don't know I think, <laughs> yeah you'd probably have to go see a judge and then they'd submit you for a psychiatric evaluation and, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah we know your types <laughs> I live in the same neighborhood as Glenn Benton. Ah, say no more. Yeah, they're like, got it. Enough said. <laughs> Lord Satan you know. down the road, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Well, it's, like I say, it's a great video and it's, it's a really cool song as well. Like you say, it is a departure and it is something new. And that's great as well. You know, it's it's been uh, 19 years since the band started. 
this is the fifth album now. So it's great that in this time, the band is still evolving and is still uh, creating a sound, their own sound and um, unaf- but being unafraid to experiment with other aspects and other subgenres. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. It's uh, and when you say that long, 19 years, that's real gross makes me feel very old (laughs) even though i'm not old by any stretch of the word but man i feel old when like uh, jamie our our singer was just up last night and uh actually yesterday we went on a bike ride a bicycle ride and hung out and just you know talk shop all day and all that jazz and he was like you know when we started this and he said the year and said the date and i'm like god man i'm like we're like it's been that long like it doesn't feel like it's been that long but holy crap you know and the arc the arc yeah man it's still going man it's like the next record is probably going to be the really cool one but you know i think i think everybody says oh this is the best record we've done i don't know man i think the next record is going to be like something else even further down the line of where we're going now i'm looking forward to that one okay so obviously (laughs) so obviously um at the moment, everything's kind of been on hold for, I'd say, at the moment for the past like year and a half or whatever, because um, of the, the pandemic. So how long ago was it that you recorded this album? Have you been sat on this for a little while? Oh, man, it's been a while now. Yeah. Um, it's been, I think it's been two years since I've tracked, maybe almost two and a half years I've, since I've tracked my drums. It's been, I'm trying to think of this. So if we're now... It's been two years since I tracked the drums and then everything else kind of fell in line after that. And then uh, it, we had actually gotten it to go to mix and then the pandemic. And it's just really kind of put, it's been, that's been crazy, man. <laughs> I mean, it's been crazy for everybody. So yeah. that goes without saying, I guess, but uh, it's been about, uh, I think the recording is about two years somewhere, uh, somewhere oh. in there. Yeah. I did wonder since you started talking about the next album before, hang on a minute. Yeah. Cool. No, nothing written. Nothing yeah. written yet. Uh, yeah. We have nothing written. Nothing written. But I just, I can feel the evolution. I can feel where it's going, and the next one will be even more. I think. But this one's killer. I like this one. Oh, yeah. Stoked on it. Uh, really, really dug what we um, our first offering with this lineup. We call it the the Mark II lineup. Uh, stoked on what we did with uh, the gift for the obsessed. You yeah. know, and then uh, this is a a real cool progression from there, in my opinion. It's Mm. it's developing nicely, I would say. Yeah, that's that's cool. I was going to ask you how you thought um, Coffin Eyes compares to the gift for the obsessed. Like you say, it's it's progressed a little bit. Yep. Um, Did you do anything different drum-wise on this album? Man, on this record, I really did my best to um, put myself in the record of ours that everybody's, well, most people are stoked on is uh, Riders of the Plague. They were like, man, this record just has everything that we were looking for, which is fucking awesome. So I found myself uh, trying to get in the same headspace that I was in when I was tracking riders. And I don't mean like the, the headspace of like a fiery 24 year old thing like that, just where I was at in playing and what I was doing and who my influences were and what was going on in my head in my 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 color palette at the time so I really just was in that zone and doing my best to bring that level of performance um I think I did a pretty good job you know I'll let everybody else decide that's up for them anyways and it'll be good bad and ugly and happy and you know i'll get all that stuff that doesn't matter but for me i i felt really good about it i felt like i was back in a similar zone and less of i think on gift i was doing kind of like a bit more of like some some tech tech deathy shit but um i don't know i can i could fall victim to that even on riders of plague there's some spots where you're like okay <laughs> all right but uh so uh, for me, I don't. I, I think that my drumming did shift a bit, but uh, I guess it'll be up to everybody else to decide. Okay. Well, I have to say, when I first heard Coffin Eyes, the drums were the first thing I noticed because they really it is really like a, like an assault, but not a sloppy one. It's more like an assassination. <laughs> it's um, 
<laughs> it really cool. stands out. Like a samurai. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. Great. That might be the best review of my drums I think I've ever had. Samurai yeah, yeah. style killing. Perfect. All right. <laughs> well, Tom Cruise, the real last samurai plays in the absence. Yeah, right. There you go. <laughs> it's going to be 18 year old movie. Even, even though I thought it was okay. I thought it was a good movie. You know, there's going to be 18 year olds watching this going, what? Last Samurai? Yeah. What's the Life last? Life the Mummy? Mm. Yeah. Um, can you tell me a little bit about the, uh, the title? Coffinized and why you felt this was uh, the right title for the album. Well, Jamie has a pretty grand story about this. So I'm going to do my best to retell it. I um, think that we're all, we're all locked in a coffin of sorts, a mental coffin, and we do it to ourselves. And he wanted to be incredibly death metal and create, a, create his own word, which is very friggin' death metal. It's just be like, yeah, well, now in the English language, coffinized exists. It's the past sense, past tense of being in a coffin, which is fucking funny. It's like campy, you know, sort of like uh, like Evil Dead or Army of Darkness or any of that shit. So, yeah. Um, so it, yeah, it's like the past tense of like, you know, emerging from being coffinized yourself. And we all get there and we all have dark spaces. And he's, he's always very uh, introspective with his lyrics and very... Um, Oh, introspective. There we go. Yeah. And uh, we all go through some shit. You know, he's no different. I'm no different. You're no different. All of you watching or listening is no different. So yeah. it's, it's, it's for everybody. It's every man's, uh, you know, explanation. And then it's whatever you decide. I mean, you could be like, fuck what that guy just said on the drums. Uh, to me, coffinized is blah, 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 blah. And then that's the exact definition. There you go. You nailed it. <laughs> What's cool about it is that it sounds like a word that's like already been used. You know, it sounds like a word that's been around for ages. Like, yeah, it feels all right. Coffinized the other day. Yeah, it feels all right. It feels like yeah, yeah like yeah. it feels authentic and old. I think you're right. Like yeah, it was a term that was already coined, but yeah. Oh, Bill, <laughs> Bill died the other day. Oh no, has he been coffinized yet? No, yeah, no, not coffee. yet. Uh, he's still, uh, they got him strung up by his uh, <laughs> shoes, so. <laughs> <laughs> and um, as for the recording itself, how was the, um, um, I can't think of any other word, but journey. How was the process of the recording itself? Was it quite smooth? Oh, man. Uh, one of the smoothest, actually. Taylor and I do all of our own stunts anyways, so we do all of our own tracking um so it's super easy to to work with him when getting drum performances um and he's kind of a, a recluse when it comes to tracking his guitars so he does all of his own stunts there sometimes i'll i'll sit in and i'll engineer him on the guitars but for the most part he just does his own thing and uh right here at our studio. And then we had, I believe Mike came up next and that was actually a, a pretty smooth environment right there, which was like smooth, easy bass tracking, which is great. And uh, Jamie came up smooth, easy vocal tracking, just to, we worked on a couple of different things, like as far as like uh, producing goes and um, maybe let's try this or this, or let's motif here, or let's have this, let's have the, like, man, Jamie is really killer about, uh, like, he'll get in there and he'll start freestyling some shit. He has a really good idea or a sense, and he'll freestyle, like, a cadence. Mm -hmm. And I've, like, uh, I'll, like, pick a cadence that he may, might have done on accident and, like, uh, maybe just go, like, ooh, yeah, let's motif that every third time that this comes out. Like, I'm totally thinking like a damn drummer. I'm like, let's motif this every time it gets over to here or something like that. And that'll give a, like a, you know, like a extra, a bit of, you know, something to the, uh, to the, to the vocal performance. And um, it's amazing to work with him. The guy is like, he, it feels like he's a limitless well of just screaming his fucking head off for, at like top he's at like Mach 5 screaming and then I can I can literally push him in the studio for hours and hours and I can be like let's get a let's get a more honest this or let's get a this and this time you know it's it's really great working environment which is cool um yeah I don't I don't have that in a lot of people that I produce even you know because I, I do a healthy amount of producing 
bands anyways. And Jamie is a uh, top shelf professional, that guy. And I'm like, by the end of it, I'm like, I don't know how you're like still having a conversation with me. I mean, I do vocals too. And like, if I scream like he did for as long as he did, I'd be like, Hey, uh, um, yeah, I'm gonna have to take a break and get a lot more tea. Like my voice like goes a lot quicker and this is just, you know, strong and that's pretty cool, man. Yeah. It must be great. Just having that, um, uh, that workmanship, you know, so, because some people like not just vocalists, but guitarists, or whatever. When you, you make that observation of this could be here, or you'll say this motif or that the other, they get so protective about it, and they just don't want to change it. So yep. it, it must be so great, great to be able to have that freedom to say this could do this, and they go, yeah. Okay. Man, it's actually the best. It's really the best. And between, again, like uh, as much as Taylor and I work together, it's uh, it's like a non thought. So even if he's like, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe instead of a thrash beat there, do a downbeat. And I'm like, uh, or like an on beat, uh, whatever, or, you know, or we'll, we'll talk to ourselves and like, yeah, instead of uh, this, do an Exodus, this, or, a, you know, like a Slayer here, Lombardo fill this out. And we're like, oh, okay. Yeah. Perfect. I wasn't even thinking that. So that could be cool. And then we try it and then nine times out of 10, the other person's idea is exactly what it needs to be be because they're hearing it from whatever you know their perspective and but it's an outside for me as a musician so like if i'm if i'm playing i kind of get stuck into like a tunnel i'm like here i mean i can be very creative in there but i feel like i could just have like a thought and then taylor can be you know like i said like oh do like a do like a slayer fill here that would be awesome and, and i like what you did here you know just tie them together with that and it's like oh yeah yeah, and then you rip that, and then you're like, "There's the, that's it, you know, fucking cut, print, send, as we say. So it's a, it's sweet to be able to have that with, with Jamie, with, um, uh, with I mean, shit, even Jamie has been, like, offered ideas, especially if we're in the writing, uh, whenever we write all together, he'll offer ideas, which is cool. It works for me. It, it's for the betterment of the song, and, like, you know, I don't always know, I don't always know, I don't always know what to do, you know? <laughs> so it's like, cool. Hell yeah. Yeah. Man. The opposite sucks ass though. <laughs> when oh, you're yeah. like combating <laughs> someone, I bet a band member be like, essentially say, no, it's my ball and I'm going to either take it or leave it. I'm going to go play over here. And it was like, Oh, Oh, mm-hmm. okay. This is your song. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Whatever, man. It's like, you can understand that, but at the same time, you're a, a band is a unit and you want to be as strong a unit as you can possibly be. So it, it that's just even having that dialogue is so much more helpful than just being so rigid about it. Yep. Uh, really great. You know, I, I can't keep saying enough of the praises of how great it is to be able to create like that. Yeah. That allows everything to sound free and, you know, it sounds seamless because I mean, it is, it's, it just, it just becomes about the song, whatever the hell the song is. Yeah. Well, something else. Coffinized is about darkness and <laughs> <laughs> that fucking bridge section, man, kills me. It's like it goes to like it gets like so skippy. You're like, oh, shit, we were just real grim. Like and then all of a sudden we're like, all right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just grooving and you go, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You're, oh there's the absence. You know. Yeah, there it is. Cool. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Because just com- even just comparing coffinized and um, choirs of um, sickness, it's it's so. I don't want to say black and white, but it's like it's different ends of the color spectrum. Absolutely, the rest of this record will be the same exact thing. Right. There is, there's some other shit on there that is going to make people go, "Wow, okay, wow, yeah. holy shit." You know, they, they, I guarantee you, you won't be prepared for it. So that's cool. <laughs> that's, that's cool. It's, Good. it's, you know, it's something to be a bit excited about. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, there's some bands, it's nice to have that familiarity and, you know, like with an ACDC album, you know what you're going to get, but with other bands as well, you want them to challenge you and you want to hear something different, especially when they're such good musicians, not to brown those you too much. Um, Thank you. So it, it's like you know what they what these people are, are capable of playing wise. So so to hear it brought out and to hear new uh, areas being 
uh, warped in. It's awesome. It really is. Cool. Fuck yeah. I felt that way about that last Judas Priest record. Uh, I was like, man, you you touch you can touch the walls. It's all this. It's it's what it needs to be. There's like some totally adventurous shit. There's some stuff that's like, OK, well, that's clearly just Judas Priest, uh, you know, yeah. clear, clear cut. And then there's some other stuff where you're like, wow, man, you guys are like doing it yeah, again. Like you said there, you could hear their musicianship, which is mm. awesome. It's yeah. really awesome. That record's great, by the way. Firepower. Oh, I'll, I'll put that up with any other Priest album. I think it's man. that good. Yes. Yeah. And uh, man, I think it's unanimous against us metalheads. We're like, oh yeah, that new Priest is badass. Like, I don't know. I haven't talked to one person. It's like, it was shit. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> you know what? Funny you say that because the other day was the first time I'd heard someone not even badmouth it, but say, oh, I was disappointed with it. Oh really? Well, yeah, I mean, hey. it was in, it was because you, have you heard uh, KK's Priest? Yep. Yeah. yeah. I think it's a good song that they've released, and I'm looking forward oh, yeah. to the album. But someone was like, "Oh, this is like the real Priest, and it's better than Firepower." I'm like, "What the fuck are you talking about?" Mm. So fair enough if that's your opinion, but yeah, fair enough. But like, no, I only liked Lightning Strikes, and the rest of Firepower I thought was just by the numbers. Okay. All right. All right. Well, hey, you know. I thought KK's Priest was badass. I thought it was. Yeah, I like it. I'm like, damn. Yeah. Uh, damn. Sounding <laughs> Hellfire Thunderbolt, right? I mean, yeah. what a fucking, what yeah. a damn title. <laughs> yeah, and Rip is such a good vocalist as well. So. Hell yeah, he is, man. Still got it. Yeah. But uh, speaking of great bands, we've still got Coffin Eyes to talk about. Okay. See what Let's I did go there. back. Yeah. See what I did? Yes. <laughs> um, something else that really sticks out about the album is the artwork and the artwork is quite kind of stark and it's almost in that black metal vein as well you know what I mean it's very um, grim in a way you see we're towing a line here yeah right? <laughs> <laughs> um, how well do you think that the art represents the album itself actually um we had originally uh oh it says unstable internet you got uh, me seems to be working okay now all's well yeah pause for a second okay okay um perfect um so coffinized is uh the, the cover is like pretty much nails the vibe like it nails the vibe of the record we the last record we did was uh was dark in content and it was dark in imagery mm. as a, as it ended up coming down the pipe. Um, so this one is darker in content. I feel that this record is darker and I love the, the stark contrast to that by having an all white lit up field that has this grim scene happening on it, or is it's dark. It's, it has such dark content to it, but it's not, it's very much, lit up and you can see everything it's very interesting sort of like that coffinized video i mean we shot that in like fucking high noon here in florida and it's like a dark concept in a very well lit sort of like that midsummer movie i don't know if you saw yeah. that where yeah. that horror movie like that's all like you can see all the edges so it makes it scarier i think because yeah. you can see it all it's fucking weird so i uh, i think that the for me the artwork really uh, really got summed up there and man that artist his name is Chad Wurr and he does such a great job um, he actually has I got a coffee table book of his hang on one second so he had actually penciled that's all graphite he hand drew it and this is another one of his uh, another oh, one nice. of his, another one of his paint uh, his uh, illustrations here yeah. It's all graphite and and then uh then he's got this real cool book. It's uh Tales from Drawloween, Chad Whirl. There he is there, and he's just got like a an image a day that he did. And some of his stuff is so damn dark. Oh, yeah. Pretty cool. So he was involved with um uh scary stories to tell in the dark as well. And um, our bass player, Mike, had been following him for a while, just loved his artwork. And then we started discussing artists for the record. 
And uh, he had brought up Chad and we all looked at his work and we're like, well, that could make a totally Blue Oyster Cult hand-drawn 1970s cover. Okay, we could do that. Interesting. That could be different. You know, that could be different enough. And then we started discussing concepts and uh, Jamie, our singer, uh, is like really had a really had a total vision for what he kind of wanted to see happen with um, with the layout, with the cover, with the, you know, he's with the videos, him and Mike together had, uh, had gotten together on it, but Jamie really kind of spearheaded that and had like some rock solid ideas that went with the uh, lyrical themes of the record. So if he's happy, then I guess that means we're all happy. I just think it looks cool. I'm over here. I'm like, man, sweet. You know, yeah. it's even got us. The cover has us in the video, the video where uh, we're carrying the coffin and on the cover, there's a illustrated little blips of us carrying that coffin too. It's kind of cool. Nice. Cool. It's been really good talking to you, Jeremy. It really has been. It's been enlightening. It's been fun. Um, I'd love to talk to you for longer, but unfortunately, uh, starting to run out of time now. Oh, man, I'm good at doing that. You get me going on and I'm like... Yeah, that's blah, blah, blah. great. I love that because <laughs> you know, it's like some people I talk to and it's like, yep, no. Nope. Oh, man. Yeah, so well, fucking pain. It's like, please talk. Please talk. <laughs> I'm so happy when I interview American bands. I'm like, yeah, they're going to talk. I'll be okay. Hell, yeah. Either that or you get uh, Tony from Venom Inc., man. I mean, that yeah. love that dude. I, man, he is a Gabby bastard. And they're like, I, I sit there and I watch him do interviews and it's everybody is so stoked. He's stoked. Everybody's stoked. And I'm like, yeah. that's the way to do interviews, man. Just yeah, man. that's the way to do it. You know? I think the interview or, I did with him is 45 minutes long on YouTube or something like that. Nice, nice, yeah. nice, nice. I believe it's most likely lots of laughs and uh, <laughs> yeah, some cheeky shit in there. That guy, he's the yeah. best. <laughs> Well, Jeremy, thanks again, man. And look after yourself and all the best with the album because this is going to be a fucking serious heavy year for next month. Thanks much, man. I appreciate it. Thanks for chatting with me.